uh, let me invite you the next speaker, Dr. Sukhanit Chamshun from Thammasat Hospital. He will uh, talk to us about the SI joint dislocation and question fractures, strategies and plan of treatment. Dr. Sukhanit, please. Thank you for uh, inviting me to this great meeting every year. So today I will talk about SI joint dislocation and uh, crescent fracture, strategy and plan of treatment. So SI joint dislocation is quite straightforward. Uh, Dr. Eventual already told us about the technique of the SI screw fixation, right? So SI joint dislocation is may begin with this case, the first case, very easy. Only SI joint dislocation on the left side. We just put a percutaneous screw fixation. That's all. Very easy. For our second case, this uh, 76 year old lady with a like a APC injury, the widening of the pubic symphysis on the anterior and the widening of the SI joint on the left side. So just put screw and the anterior fixation for the augmentation. That's all quite well after fixation. And the third case, so we have an uh, anterior link fracture and also widening of the pubic symphysis with the uh, SI joint dislocation on the left side. And you can notice that on the right side also widening of the SI joint. So we have a very wide uh, variety of the injury. So the topic is only specific point. So we cannot describe everything, right? And not single treatment or plan can apply to all types of the fracture because there is no only the posterior disruption. There is also anterior link and also acetabular fracture. So it's made different. So I will talk about today, I will focus about crescent fracture because somebody may not know about this uh, terminology. So for uh, SI joint dislocation, we have a screw fixation like this, or anterior fixation of the SI joint. And also on the posterior, we can add a press fixation, especially on the crescent fracture like this. If you know, crescent fracture is a posterior fracture that the posterior ileum is there attached to the cyclum with a strong ligament, as you know, the posterior SI ligament is very strong, so it's still attached to the axial skeletal. And it may like this, very simple, or it may be like this, with the vertical translation. So let's have a look. The crescent fracture proposed by the Borelli in uh, 1996. So he said that this is a subset of the lateral compression injury. That's we found most in pelvic fracture, more than 50%. Uh, this is only subset in LC. And the ileum is still intact. This so is term crescent, it looks like crescent on the back, like this, right? And they, they proposed the classification for this specific type of the fracture. In uh, 2007, they classified as type one, two, three, like this from anterior to the posterior, defined by the size of the fragment. It's only uh, is large size or medial size or small size, right? And they try to get a plan for the treatment in each type. They propose that for the type one like this, type two like that, and type three like this, maybe different plan. That is the, the point. They propose that Taiwan, they use the anterior approach for lateral uh, quenal to the inner iliac wing, and then put the plate fixation, as I show you for the SI joint dislocation, put the anterior fixation with the plate. And for the type two, they propose that we need the posterior approach to the outer iliac wing to fix on the posterior. And for the type three, only percutaneous iliosacral screw fixation, that's enough because we have very big piece of this ileum, so we can put the SI screw for the SI dislocation. We can treat as a SI joint dislocation in TRI-3. Okay, this is for a example in that uh, paper. This is the first uh, Taiwan, they put the plate and clearly, 
and put the plate on the electrolyte. The second, they put the plate on the back to the posterior electrolyte and add the screw in diametrically in the ileum to add the stability. And for type 3, put the SI screw as usual. But not everyone agree with him. So uh, Lau and Khalifi in 2013, they said that they couldn't classify in 12 patients in 129 injury, cannot fit in any type of day classification. And also Minan in 2017, three in uh, 10 cases, difficult to classify. I would have a look that why it's very difficult to classify. This is from the paper of Khalifi. Taiwan, Tai Chu, and Tai Chu, as you know, they said that in Taiwan, they agree with uh, anterior plating to the lateral surgical interval of either uh, or no. But for the second, for the Tai Chu, percutaneous IO surgical school is possible because the intact of the lateral cortex. And Tai Chu also, as we know, SI school is now. But in some cases that they cannot classify because of the fracture is not like, like that. It's not transverse. It's oblique fracture. So the uh, fracture line is not extend into one point of the SI uh, joint. And also when you make the cut in S1 or S2 is different. Anterior, small anterior or in the middle. So it's very difficult to classify exactly where it is. Okay, and look at the paper. So uh, in this paper, they use in type two and type three, they use percutaneous IO cycle screw in most case, but it's not, it cannot apply to every case like you can see here. Both anterior and posterior fixation and plating and screw is maybe required because as I told you, it's a last spectrum of the injury so it's not just the posterior link. Okay, so that's why we have a different method to fix, cannot apply in uh, every case in that time. Okay, but mainly in present of uh, Taiwan, so mainly anterior padding is a good choice. So strategy, so let's have a look at the whole pelvic ring. So we may need at the beginning, what we call uh, displacement, when we need the skeletal traction to get the reduction uh, for the what we call translation, but and for anterior uh, ring fracture. So it may need anterior fixation first, as the Dr. Surapong told you. Maybe we need anterior fixation first because it helps reduction on the posterior ring. So is it, there is an incomplete SI joint dislocation or pubic symphysis diastasis. If you fix the anterior first, it may help you to get a reduction when you fix the posterior. Because if you fix posterior, it's very rigid and it may be very difficult to get a reduction on anterior afterward. And in anterior and posterior ring uh, fixation, in the case that I told you the complete SI joint dislocation, very uh, vertically unstable, it may require both anterior and posterior fixation. And for a specific type of the crescent fracture, restoration of the SI joint and pelvic stability is the more important. So SI joint reduction is the best from anterior. You can see the joint very clearly because on the back is composed of the strong recommend, not the synovium of the SI joint anteriorly. So anterior is the best. This is uh, my strategy when I face with this uh, injury. So the reduction technique, we try a uh, cross reduction first. Maybe we use the uh, traction and chance pin at either acres or supercellular. And if we cannot achieve the cross reduction, do not hesitate to open reduction from the anterior first. And if we cannot get the anterior reduction by the anterior approach, we may use the posterior approach in case that maybe let a presentation or we cannot get a reduction. So this is an example for the anterior plating in the uh, uh, CAT report in this uh, 
injury is a dislocation of the SI joint and dislocate on the anterior and they try to put, uh, get it back and put the plane fixation. Also for the second case, uh, the angle for the two plane fixation on the anterior and also for the third case. So you can see here that we can use the anterior approach for the fixation of the crescent fracture very easy. But some propose that we can use only screw fixation because they have a, it's like a I am nail, right? When we put the screw in, they use the multiple screw fixation from the type one. Also for type two, they use a cross screw fixation like this, or the type three only uh, SI screw fixation is enough. So they compare with the plating. They said that uh, it's quite comparable, but it's less invasive. Okay, you can look at this paper. It's more than 100 patients in this paper, so it's quite interesting here. Yeah. So for the last uh, paper that I bring you to uh, see this uh, agreement of the direct entry approaches whenever possible for the crescent fracture, the critic on the day guideline. And if not feasible for any reason, posterior padding or interfragmentary screw fixation for the posterior is uh, the alternative method. Let's have a look at the case that I have faced. This is very, I can say this is the most difficult case that I have ever met. This is a pelvic ring fracture with a 27 years old man with hypovolemic shock at the beginning. You can see here, pelvic symphysis widening, SI joint widening, and here crescent fracture on the left side, and also acetabulum fracture on the left. And they put a C clamp. You can see, you cannot get a crest bone on the left side. And here, still this case on the C clamp application. And after five days, they change to X-Fix Super Acetula, but it still cannot get any uh, better reduction, okay? It's very trans posterior translate. And also, I will, uh, will give you this, why it's very difficult, because the anterior displacement of the, this iliac crest is almost at the midline, okay? So in that, Legion, you know that this great vessel, internal iliac artery, lie over there, and also uh, L4, L5, nerve root, so, and it's not easy because it's a spike like this, very sharp spike here. So it's very problematic for me to get that across the sacrum back to its uh, anatomical position. So this is a diagnosis in this case. So it's, this is very difficult. I try to use everything, the traction and hook, very uh, exciting at that time because it's very uh, afraid of the uh, great vessel injury, okay? Put the whole man, try to put the uh, cuff and everything that I can use, push more, chance screw, and you can see here the, the, the starting point is 11 o'clock. And when I get it done, it's about three. So it's four hours. I can say this lock dislocation. I have ever faced in my life. I, I cannot imagine, I, if I cannot do it, did it, the reduction, how can I do? I, I have to cut the, the, the tip a little bit, yeah to get a more feasible for our reduction. And this is a final fixation. Put the screw, it's combined of the fixation of the posterior tendon band wiring, and put the screw on the right side and left side and anterior plating on the anterior and on the back also. This is a final x-ray uh, five months ago, okay? Five months after the injury. Okay, take home message is right cord reduction for extraction, chance pin, percutaneous screw. If the posterior lateral cortex is still intact, Open reduction is uh, you cannot get a whole reduction. Anterior is the best visualization of the SI joint. Posterior, uh, crescent fracture fixation. If delay surgery or irreducible, maybe you have to go to, to the posterior. Fixation, posterior, or uh, by screw or plating or combined plate and screw. And do not forget minimize substitute uh, dissection because if you go posteriorly, you have to strip up all the muscle, may uh, increase infection rate. Thank you.